that's the thing that Perry asked me to do that he didn't realize I couldn't do. And unfortunately, Fusion 360 is still in the dark ages as far as drafting text is concerned. It's a real shame. Um, but I'm really into his idea. So as I said before, I'm just going to kind of plow on with a different design and hope he likes it. Um, it doesn't matter if he doesn't. I just won't publish this video. <laughs> Julian here. I had an email from Perry and he's making his forge. He's asked me to do something on 3D modeling that he mistakenly believes I am able to do and he's asked me to do a badge for his furnace. He's given me a few ideas. I know Perry is perfectly good at doing 3D design himself so what's happened is he's asked me to do this thing because he thinks I can do it and he can't. I can't do that thing but I'm really into what he's asked me to do, so I'm just going to do it anyway. <laughs> I'm going to basically take over and make him a little badge, whether he likes it or not. Poor Perry. Um, I bet he's regretting asking me now. But it seems like a really fun project, and I thought I'd do a little video about it. Okay, so Perry has told me that his furnace is basically cylindrical in shape. Its diameter is 406.4 millimeters. So I'm going to make a new sketch, and I'm going to put a circle and make that diameter 406 millimeters. Sorry, I'm having to look around my microphone again. There we go, so that's a huge circle. And so this is gonna be a, a basic rough model of his furnace. And I'm going to extrude that up in the air by 400 millimeters. It's only so we can have a kind of a curve to work from, new body. All right, so that is the rough shape of Perry's furnace. Now I know he's got some writing around the top, which is pretty fancy. So I'm leaving the top alone. I have to make the badge on the front. Now he's asked me to put some words along here and you can actually do words on a cylinder in Fusion 360. <laughs> However, because we're casting types, we want to put words onto a cylinder in this case, but each individual letter of the words needs to have a draft so that it can be removed from the sand. You can't do that yet on Fusion 360, not on a cylinder. That's the thing that Perry asked me to do that he didn't realize I couldn't do, but I'm really into his idea. So as I said before, I'm just gonna kind of plow on with a different design and hope he likes it. Um, it doesn't matter if he doesn't, I just won't publish this video. <laughs> um, right, let's go. So the idea, instead of putting words onto a curved cylinder, which is impossible for me to do in Fusion with draft, I'm going to try and put words and a picture onto a flat surface, which will then be mounted to the cylinder. So it'll be a flat badge, but the back of the badge will be curved to, to fit the cylinder. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna move this cylinder so that the surface is behind this axis here. I also want it to go down a bit. Now, if I do a sketch on this plane here at the origin, it'll be six millimeters off this curved surface. So now we can design the actual badge, create sketch, and I'm gonna sketch it onto this axis. I think we should go with square. Now it can't be too big because obviously if it's really big, the kind of at the edges here, it's gonna be a very thick casting. So I think, 15 centimeters, 15 centimeters. So I think that might be a, a nice big badge. Uh, Perry might not want it this big, so we could always shrink it afterwards. Let's also put some fillet on the corners. Okay, that looks good. And finally, the whole shape of the badge needs to have draft itself. So we're gonna extrude that straight into the cylinder. And as you can see, there's zero draft on it right now. 90 degrees there. If I make the taper angle, now what will Perry be happy with? I think probably eight, eight degrees. I think that's enough. And we don't want to cut, we want to make it a new body. All right, so now that'll have draft. You can see from the front, 
the outside edges are bigger. Well, that is essentially the basic badge. Now, he wants the words angel and forge on there somewhere. To make it a bit prettier, I'm going to put a border. I'm going to create a sketch on that surface of the badge. And I'm going to use the offset tool and just highlight the perimeter there. And I don't know what's a good size, maybe five millimeters. And now I'm going to extrude the badge in again using eight degrees of draft. So extrude. And now you can see it's got draft there. I'm going to make that 10 actually, make life easier for Perry. Three millimeters, is that too much? I'm going to go with two millimeters. Done. Okay, so now we've got our bad shape with a nice border. We need some text on it. Now I'm going to make a sketch on this surface. And we're going to add some text. Now Fusion's got this new thing, this new text tool. Unfortunately, it's not completely amazing. It's semi-amazing, but it's kind of semi-amazing from five years ago. It's a shame it's not up to date with the other tools you can do, drafting letters and things. But considering what it was, it's a lot better. So you, you make a bounding box. Perry wants the words angel. Now let's see. Now the, the font is important. Artifact element black gives a working draft, I have discovered. Probably, let's say 20, 22. I also need to show on this model where Perry will put his holes to kind of mount it to the furnace. So I'm actually going to quickly do that now before I do the lettering, just so that I can avoid the holes with the important things. I'm guessing they ought to be around these, the center point of this filleted corner here. For now, I'm going to put a little divot so that Perry can see where to drill the hole. That might be nice and helpful for him. If I do a five millimeter circle, and again here. Now in the real world, these holes would go all the way through to the back, but I'm actually only using these as an indicator for where Perry should drill. So I don't want these holes to go all the way through to the back. So I'm going to select all those circles and pressing the control key means I can add to my selection. There we go. Now E for extrude, I want it to go in a little. But in order to make it a divot that has draft, I'm actually going to make this quite a cone shape, as it were. So really, it's just a little drill hole mark for him. Right, now I can put the lettering in, carry on with that. And again, bold, angel, forge. All right, now I can extrude these letters. Let's see if I can do both at the same time. Yes, I can. Okay, so this is a straight extrusion, no draft. You still have to be very cautious when you do extrusions on lettering in Fusion. And I've noticed that some fonts do not work at all. Some you have to use particular multiples of millimeters and angles. It's, it's quite frustrating. The smaller the distance, the better. So let's do two millimeters. Or maybe we should go for three. Let's, let's push the boat out. Now here's where we may get into trouble. Let's do a taper angle of eight. Right, we've got lucky. Those nice big letters, because I've only used eight degrees, let's see what it looks like with 10. If you push it, one of the letters will fail. Well, 10 looks good. Cut. Oh, that looks good. It's going to look very strange. Like one of those masks when it spins. You can't tell whether it's kind of the face is towards you or inside. Now, that was kind of the easy bit. I also want to put on this. Now, because it's called the Angel Forge, I found a clip art angel, but I've also added a shank and a crucible. So I've saved that as angel3.svg. It was a little bit more difficult than I imagined. I'm, I've only used Inkscape a couple of times. Let's see if we can import angel3 into here. Now I've used an SVG because it's a vector file. That's got really good information for extruding things. If I'd used a JPEG, you couldn't extrude. Okay, it's down here. Yeah, I need to fix that. Because in Inkscape, I made the shank handle with one straight line or two straight lines missing the hand. It's kind of kept that information. I actually need to put a line on either side to make a hand. If it wasn't for the fact that we were casting, I could just do this. I could select the angel. I could literally just press E to it for extrude. In is minus two millimeters. And there we go, it's done. If I click OK, it's now extruded in. But there's no draft on those extrusions. So if you were to put that face down in some sand and ram it down, or you know, face up in some sand and ram the sand on top of it, 
when you turn it all the other way up and then want to remove the pattern because there's no draft you will get sand left in the little grooves and that will mean that when you cast it you won't have the nice definition so you do need draft and it's hard to do on a vector like this look i'll show you here i'll try and put a taper angle on here of something small like five degrees and look fusion throws up an error because these lines they're all curved I think the maths is just too hard and occasionally when the lines are too close um, and an extrusion occurs it kind of crosses over with itself and I think it just says I can't do this. It's a real shame because it would make this a very powerful bit of software but at the moment you can't do it. But there is a workaround. It's a bit clunky and it's using the software as it was not intended to be used. So in order to make life easy uh, I'm actually going to cut a rectangle out of here and then remove that from this badge. And then when I'm doing the workaround, I will try and work the angel onto the square rectangle. I'm going to keep the plate itself. So now if I turn the plate off, you can see there's actually a hole where the plate has been removed. So now I've got the plate and the hole where the plate can go to make it flat and smooth. So now I can just play around with putting the angel onto this plate. Hi friends, future editing Julian here. Um, right, we have a slight problem. So I think we're at the stage of the video about here. I think we're about 12 minute mark. And already I wanted to be around six minutes in watching at this point. But as per usual, all my videos are twice as long as I want them to be. But this isn't the problem. So this was the easy bit and I've shown you the easy bit so far. But if I zoom out and show you the footage, so if you bear in mind that to this point here from the start is 12 minutes and that's after me editing all of the rubbish out the ums and the ahs the the redos everything's gone now if we just zoom out and we'll see what we've got left to do do you see my problem so right here here is 12 minutes and here is the end of the project <laughs> five hours and seven minutes of footage later so i've not had to do this before but we're gonna have to do something slightly differently basically to cut a long story short this whole process here was shot over about four days it's probably about i don't know probably about 15 hours worth of work from here to here I wasn't recording all of it, of course, just the kind of the bits where something occurred. Honestly, this whole process was so complicated, I don't think I could replicate it myself, even though I did it, even though I've done it once before. Um, in a nutshell, Fusion is an effing nightmare. I mean, why would it be good? It's ridiculous. I'm using this software as it was not intended. Essentially, I'm trying to take a vector and then I'm trying to carve it out with a virtual tooltip in an engraving fashion or a, or a milling action and then I'm trying to export what is left after the virtual milling process which then leaves me the, the seven degrees of draft that I want then I have to really clunkily save that stock then I have to re-import it back into Fusion but because it's now an STL and not a CAD friendly file it's it's essentially a shell and it needs to be made solid again. And in order to do that in Fusion, I need to completely decimate the number of triangles in it. So I have to take it from like a million triangles down to 15,000 or 20,000, something manageable for Fusion. And then I have to make that mesh into a solid body. Then I have to apply a flat plate to the back of that solid body so that the little islands of plastic of the angel's hair and that kind of thing is actually fixed in into a position then i have to export that whole thing as the little angel plate then i have to put that into the badge honestly hooray it's been a complete nightmare <laughs> i stuck with it because i'm a stubborn sob uh, and it was kind of fun at the time, but editing is not fun at the best of times and Editing five hours. I just can't do it. I can't face it. So I don't know what to say. Just bear with me I'm gonna try and tell this story in about two minutes. Basically what you're gonna see is not the whole story at all um, But you'll see a badge at the end Hooray! I can't believe it. It looks brilliant. I love it um, It'll all be for naught if Perry hates it, but you know, if he does, 
I'll cast it. And uh, Perry might not want it sticking out. See, the whole thing was Perry asked me to do it because he thought I could make a curved design, but I just can't. Not with drafted pictures and text. So this is the best I could do. But to be honest, I think Perry could probably do something like this. So we'll see. Sorry, Perry. I kind of forced my way into your project there. Uh, I hope you forgive me. I hope you like the result anyway. All right, friends. No, don't go. This is a classic example where I've ended the video early and I shouldn't have done. If you hang on, you'll actually see the patterns printed in PLA. They look awesome. So that was the basic 10,000 times speeded up version of how I got a vector shape drafted into Fusion. Exhausting, I know. There are a few more little jobs to be done and then the badge will be ready. I need to remove the shape of the furnace from the badge to actually leave the curve back. I also add a little border to the angel area. I also remove a lot of the material in the back of the badge where it's thick. And finally, and stupidly, I also decided to make a second badge, but with the lettering protruding forward to the same level as the border, in case Perry wants to do the painting and sanding back technique on the badge to reveal the shiny letters. I also add some hexagon cutouts for some nut traps that will help Perry remove the pattern from the sand. Right, that's pretty much it. Perry has just told me that his 3D printer is now broken. Can you believe it? <laughs> Lucky for him though, I have these test prints already made. So I'm going to post them to him. And hopefully he'll be able to cast the badge from those. I hope you like it, mate. You are totally awesome. And a huge congratulations on reaching 6,000 subscribers. It's much deserved. Well done, mate. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe before you shoot off and watch Perry's video. Dum de dum. Steal Perry from this picture. Put it on this picture. Now what can we put in there with Perry? Oh yes. I need to put the dog behind his fingers. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's that's it. Now we've got the dog and the, now I put that one in. Right. Oh, it's complicated. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Nice. If Perry doesn't hate this badge, and if we've got our act together, you should find a link to the casting of the badge on the screen now or in the description. Thanks loads for watching. Bye. Two, five, seven. Two, five, seven. What are you still doing here? Go watch Perry cast this thing. Links in the description.